What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and welcome to the 455th edition of TSR Live, your daily dose of red pill truth, wisdom, and awareness. Carol Sandberg is at it again, and we're going to go ahead and get right to it. So Cheryl Sandberg made an appearance, I don't know, it's the Today Show or, you know, some show on on CBS, and she is talking about the fact that men are uncomfortable with interacting with females in the workplace. And she seemed to be very surprised about it, her and her, her, her co-host. So let me go ahead and bring up the video. There we go. And as usual, I'm going to give my commentary. I'm going to stop the video periodically. I'm going to give my commentary and give you guys the uh, the 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 red pill version of what's really going on here. So let's go ahead and get this party started here. Women are still navigating the effects of the male-dominated workplaces a year and a half after the rise of the Me Too movement. Now that's according to a new study by LeanIn.org. That's an organization dedicated to helping women achieve their goals. It found, and these numbers are very troubling, 60% of male managers say they are uncomfortable interacting with women at work. And that's up 32%. Okay, so <laughs> right off the bat, we've got the we, we've we've got we've got the Captain Obvious thing going on here, right? So 60% of male managers are uncomfortable with interacting with women at work. And the very first question that I'd like to ask, what'd you expect? Like, did you expect to have dudes get fired all over the place and for men to just keep putting themselves at risk? Mike Pence is the, listen, he is the perfect example of a man who refuses to put himself at risk because of a woman, right? He saw what happened to Brett Kavanaugh. A woman accused him of rape 30, 35 years ago. No evidence whatsoever. It took them how long? It became this big controversy over no evidence. Well, guess what? Mike Pence decided, hey, you want to know something? I'm never going to eat alone with women. I'm never going to meet alone with women. Anytime I have a woman in my office, anytime I'm in the presence of a woman, there will always be a third party present. And now what they're doing is they're saying that this hurts women, as you will see here. Let's continue. In 2018, workplace interactions that men are nervous about include mentoring, socializing, and having one-on-one -on -one meetings with women. Cheryl Sandberg, Lean In's founder and Facebook's chief operating officer, is with us first on CBS This Morning with a look at the survey's results. Cheryl, good morning to you. Thank you all for having me because this topic is so important. No, I read the numbers and my mouth fell open. I'm Oh, my mouth fell open again. Did you did you expect things to stay the same? What's so surprising by this? It's like we find out a dude like burned his hand on a stove, right? Then we find out that he no longer puts his hand on the stove. And we say, oh my God, my mouth fell open when I found out that this man no longer puts his hand on a hot stove. How could this be? How in the world could this be? Like I said, this definitely hurts women in the workplace, right? Or at least that's what they, listen, maybe it does hurt them, but that's on them. This is on women. Careful what you wish for. They wanted sexual harassment to stop and it has stopped. But now that they're complaining that it has stopped. So which is it? Do you I mean, is sexual harassment bad? Is it good? Like, I don't, I don't understand. This is, this again is another case of women not knowing what they want or need. What message does it send? Well, we're in a bad place. So 60% of male managers in the U.S., 60% are afraid to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a woman. Think about how, <laughs> look at how surprised she was. 60%, like, oh my God, this is so shocking. Think about how ridiculous this sounds. Here's the truth, guys. This whole charade that they're doing here, this is intellectual, this is intellectual dishonesty. They're not surprised at all. They have to act like they're surprised, but they're really not surprised, guys. They knew that this would happen, or at least <laughs> this is probably an unintended consequence. Hashtag me too, sexual harassment. We're not going to take it anymore. Hell no, we won't go. And so on and so forth. And now they want to act surprised. My guess is that the term unintended consequences has probably been thrown around a number of times. But even if they didn't know that this would happen, they're acting like they're surprised that men are no longer putting themselves in harm's way. 
How do you get promoted without a one-on-one -on -one meeting? No one's ever gotten promoted without a one-on-one -on -one meeting. I feel no one's ever gotten promoted without a one-on-one -on -one meeting. This is false. People do get promoted without one-on-ones. It's called meritocracy. It's called hard work. It's called being promoted on your merits and results. You want to know why women want one-on-one -on -one meetings, guys? So they can use their feminine influence on males to give them promotions. This is the only reason why they're bitching and complaining about not getting one-on-ones. But let's just say this is true. Let, let, let's, just, let's just entertain, j j just for the sake of argument, let's just say that promotions do not happen without one-on-one -on -one meetings. And to that, I say tough shit. You can't have it both ways, ladies. You can't bitch and moan about sexual harassment happening one day, right? And then one-on-one -on -one meetings, it, or, or sexual harassment happening during these one-on-one -on -one meetings, and then wonder why men don't have one-on-one -on -one meetings anymore. And the crux of the situation is that men, most men don't sexually harass women. Now, some people, now some women say, oh my God, all men sexually harass women. And, and again, this goes back to the whole date rape thing, right? They no longer just call, they no longer call it rape. I've talked about this before. They like to call it date rape. The reason why they want to call it date rape is because they want to expand the definition. They want to expand the definition to include other things. She wasn't sober enough to consent. She was too drunk. The guy, it was, it was regret. Listen, regret sex isn't rape. If the sex was consensual, then it was not rape. This is why they call it sexual assault. I can't remember the last false, I can't remember the last rape charge. He raped me. No, they say he sexually assaulted me. She doesn't have to say rape anymore. She can say sexual assault. And that could mean he looked at her in a sexual way. He grazed her tits. He grazed her butt. It could mean anything. This is why that they, this is why they say sexual assault. Because there are many, many definitions of sexual assault. And here's another clause in their quasi-definition. Up to and including but not limited to. So sexual assault can mean anything they want it to mean. Well, guess what? It's the same as sexual harassment. Sexual harassment is a very broad definition. Most men do not sexually harass women at is, at, as it is defined today by women. But there are so many frivolous and false accusations that men are not going to put themselves in harm's way. Most of these hashtag me too accusations, they're BS and women know it. They use these one-on-one -on -one meetings to, get, to, to either get what they want or they hashtag me to the guy. It's a lose-lose situation. Hence, men not doing one-on-ones. I just did a podcast the other day. I pointed out an article about a girl who accused a guy. I think, oh, oh my God, what? You, it, was, it was at a university, prominent university. And I forget, you know, somebody can probably let me know via Super Chat. But they're withholding his degree because a, a, a female student accused him of sexual assault. Sex didn't occur. The guy recorded the whole thing, number one. Number two... The sex didn't occur. Number three, she was the aggressor. She's the one who bit him. She assaulted him. But the investigation shows, the, invest, the, the, the investigation clearly showed that he was not guilty of sexual assault or rape. You want to know what? They're still withholding his degree. Why are they withholding his degree? And this is, exa this is exactly why he is suing the school to get his degree back. Forgive me, I forget what school this was. But this is exactly the same as these hashtag me too's and these false sexual harassment claims. You cannot be one-on-one -on -one with a woman. Even if this guy at this university proved, listen, I recorded the whole thing. The sex didn't occur. Nope. She said you raped her. She said you sexually assaulted her. So guess what? We're going to take her out of work. We're going to take your degree. We're going to kick you out of school. This happens in the workplace, guys. Confident in that. Men, senior men right now, are nine times more likely to hesitate to travel with a woman and six times more likely to hesitate to have a work dinner. And the problem is that even before this, women, and especially women of color, do not get the same oh, amount of mentoring. Oh, 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 here we go. Here we go. Women of color. Here we go with this. Let's, let's get one thing straight, gentlemen. Feminism is a white girl privilege. Feminism is not for black women. Feminism does not help black women. Unfortunately, black women haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> Quote unquote, black feminists, they live the worst lives of any class of human in the United States. White feminist women, eh, you know, they get all, they, they get those benefits. Feminism is not for women of color. 
Yet, here Sandberg is, she's including them here to just to fortify her argument and to avoid the, well, what about women of color from women of color? And it's funny because a few months after hashtag me too started, black women were bellyaching about that. They were bellyaching about the fact that men were not sexually harassing them at work either. Oh my God, men are not sexually harassing us. I can't believe it. This is because men don't want them, but they want to feel wanted. So they squawked. Okay, whatever. But Sandberg mentions women of color to include them and to toe the feminist line. That's all there is to it. Which means we're not getting any. And, you know, it's not enough to not harass us. You need to not ignore us either. Wait, it's not enough to not harass us. You need to not ignore us either. You see this? So on one hand, you wanted men to stop harassing you. Okay, they did that. But now you want them not to ignore you. Again, you cannot have it both ways. If men don't ignore women, they get hashtag me too. Period. You say hi to work. You say hi to a woman at work. Hashtag me too. I don't like the way he looked at me when he said hi. Ask her how her day was. Sexual harassment. I thought that he was insinuating something sexual. One on one with a meeting and you criticize her work. Hashtag me too. Women have weaponized this, and men naturally walked away. But now that we've walked away, they want us to not ignore them. Guys, listen, ladies, it's either one or the other. You did this. This is what you wanted. And now, as usual, you want all the benefits without any of the consequences. It's just like feminism. Feminism, what, you, listen, you wanted equal rights for women. You wanted women to be treated equally. And guess what? You got it. But there is a price to be paid for being treated equally. You see, if you act like a man, you get treated like one. Right. If you want to listen, if you want the same, if you want the same opportunities and responsibilities for a man, guess what? You're going to be treated like a man. There are costs to this. Feminism has costs. You can't get all the benefits without any of the costs. If you want to smoke in hot body, the cost is that you have to live in the gym and you have to watch what you eat. If you want to be wealthy, the cost is you have to work 80 plus hours a week and you have to sacrifice your relationships. That is a cost. Hashtag me too, hashtag me too has costs and drawbacks, and this is one of those drawbacks. But they still want us to subject ourselves to a sexual harassment claim so, they, so that they can get a, quote, seat at the table. Get the hell out of here with that. They want us to endanger ourselves. They want us to put ourselves in danger to benefit them. Newsflash. We've done that for eons. Building bridges, construction, the sewer system, oil fracking. All of the dangerous jobs that men do to make the lives of women better. Putting ourselves in danger to benefit women. Now they want that in the workplace too. Nah, bruh. Nope. This is where, th listen, this is where men are drawing the line. They are not, they're not getting any more acquiescence from us. We've done enough acquiescing. Do you think they have cause to feel that way? Well, I think it's a false trade-off. Oh, there it is. He asked her straight up, do you think they have cause to feel that way? He asked her, he asked her straight up, do men have cause to be afraid? Why are men, and, and, and listen, it's funny, the elephant in the room are, are false sexual harassment claims, right? No one has said it yet. And Sandberg is about to say it, but he asked her straight up, hey, listen, do men have cause to be worried? And she literally skirted the question. The answer is yes, and she knows it. But then she comes back, well, it's a false trade-off. What the hell does that even mean? <laughs> a false trade-off. Of course men have cause to feel this way. I think people can travel. I think people can go to dinner. I think people can have one-on-one -on -one meetings. All of those things can be done in public places. Absolutely. But guess what? You can have a one-on-one -on -one meeting or a dinner in a public place, but that doesn't solve anything. A woman can still say he touched me or he said something to me. And because nobody in the public place is paying close attention to them, it is his word against hers. And if it's his word against hers, they're going to take her word every time. A public place doesn't solve anything. Having a third party, however, does. But women don't want that third party. Want to know why? Because they want to maintain that leverage. You see, gentlemen, a third party neutralizes her power to end a man's career with just her word. A third party keeps her from lying about her sexual harassment claims. This is exactly the reason why Mike Pence has the policy that he does. Guys, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends. Send them the links to my videos. I'd, agree, I'd greatly appreciate that. If you want to support the show, 
You can do that via Super Chat. Shout out to Black Wolf Inc. with a $2 Super Chat. Says, it's like she is shocked that men can't ignore them. Right, exactly. Exactly. If you want 100% of your contribution to go directly to the towers, you can do that at patreon.com slash donovansharp1. Again, that's patreon.com slash donovansharp and the number one. YouTube takes about 30% right off the top. I Listen, I don't mind if, if, if I were YouTube, I'd probably take somewhere in the neighborhood of, I don't know, maybe 45 or even 50%. I certainly don't mind if super chatting is the way you want to do it. I got no complaints. I appreciate the support. If you want more of your contribution to come to the show, streamlabs.com slash Donovan Sharp. I'm going to put the link in the chat now. Also, gentlemen, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. You know, channels like mine get deleted all the time. So make sure you never, ever, ever miss out on my content. Go to DonovanSharp.com slash newsletter. And guys, again, you know, I'm not going to blow up your inbox. I'm only going to give you guys relevant emails. Again, that's donovansharp.com slash newsletter. Okay, let's continue here. And everyone can behave appropriately. But if there's a man out there who doesn't want to have a work dinner with a woman, my message is simple. Don't have one with a man. Don't have one with a man. <laughs> this is so funny. Don't have one with a man, right? Well, they're, they're both the same. Look, here's the difference. Men don't accuse men of sexual harassment. Men don't hashtag me to each other. You see how this works? She's being disingenuous, gentlemen, and intellectually dishonest. Men and women aren't equal, period. Women falsely accuse men of sexual harassment. Men do not. This is why men have dinners and one-on-ones with other men and not women. So she says... Don't have a one-on-one -on -one with a man as if it's literally the same thing when she knows it is clearly not. There's no threat of losing your job when you have a one-on-one -on -one with a man. There is with a woman. This is simple math, and she knows this. Look at her smile. Look how smug she is. It's, it's, it's as, it, it is as though she knows she's putting men in an impossible situation, and they can do nothing about it. She knows this isn't the same thing. Oh, so just don't have it with men. Okay, well, if you're going to limit our opportunities... Well, just limit the opportunities of men. No, not going to happen, sweetie. <laughs> not going to happen. Men are comfortable with other men having dinners and cigars and all that because men don't accuse each other of, of, of sexual harassment. Men don't hashtag me to each other. Women do. Come on. Group lunches for everyone. Make Bang. 100% agreement there. Group lunches for everyone. You have a third party. You have a fourth party. You have a fifth party. Everybody in the room can see everything. Explicit, make it thoughtful, make it equal. People don't get promoted in group lunches either. You Correct. Know? And there you, there you go. <laughs> you see that? You see that? Sheryl Sandberg comes up with a workable solution, group lunches. And bang, there, I don't even know what this woman's name is. Bang, there she goes. Well, you don't get promotions without um, without uh, without one-on-ones. Gentlemen, these women don't want solutions that don't put men at risk. That's what this is about. Hashtag me too puts men at risk. Men being the, lo being the logical, rational creatures. We said, okay, if I don't want to be accused of sexual harassment, then I cannot be alone with a woman. So now these women are trying to shame us into putting ourselves back at risk. That's stupid. Any solution, any solutions that do not put men at risk are not the solutions they want. They don't want equality, guys. They want leverage. They want the power to end a man's career, and that's how they get promotions. I have to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting. And this, the reason why this troubles me so much is that if men are doing the right thing and they're behaving appropriately, they don't have to worry about any of this. They don't have to worry oh about being God. accused. And therein lies the issue. The false sexual harassment complaint. She's right. If men don't do these things, if men don't sexually harass, then they don't have to be they don't have to worry about being falsely accused of sexual harassment. But the fact that they do worry about this clearly shows that there are women who falsely accuse men of sexual harassment in the workplace. Otherwise, why would why would they be avoiding one-on-ones and traveling with women in the first place? That statement right there, well, if 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 they weren't doing anything wrong, they wouldn't have anything to worry about. That statement shows right there that these women don't care about the truth. They care about the they don't care about the false sexual harassment claims. They only care about the fact that men are no longer putting themselves at risk at work and they don't like it. Men are taking their power and leverage away and women don't like it. 
You say men need to step up. Men need to step up. We need to redefine what it means to be a good guy at work. It's not enough to not harass. And I it's not enough to not harass. Sure it is. And it's working. To the tune of 60% of male superiors, male managers, male supervisors not meeting alone with women. Guys, guess what? Next year, it'll probably probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of 75%. And the year after that, 85%, maybe even 90 Too many people think that's sufficient. That's necessary. That's a basic, but it's not sufficient. Women need equal opportunity. And what does that mean? Equal time in meetings. It means the right kind of feedback. So a recent study of performance reviews showed that 66% of women got feedback on how they work, their style, they're too aggressive, they're too this, they're too that. Do you know what percentage of men got that feedback? How many? Probably not a lot. Less than one. Again, this is a fundamental difference between men and women. Guy, listen, th this, is, this is biology. This is mother nature. When women act masculine in the workplace, it rubs people the wrong way. Guess what? It rubs both men and women the wrong way. Devin's former supervisor, she got fired because she was bossy and bitchy all the time. She was way too hypercritical. She didn't have a filter. She was, she, for, for Halloween, she dressed up as Rosie, to, uh, Rosie the Riveter. Women like her feel like they have to be hypercritical because they want that respect. Her, now here's the thing. Devin's supervisor's supervisor was the same way. Nobody complains. Want to know why? Because he's a man. And this is what men do. Her supervisor was the same way. Nobody com listen, nobody complains about him, right? You can't expect to act like a man, then be surprised that people aren't treating you like a lady. It's either one or the other. It's like promiscuous females who are promiscuous, but then they still expect to be treated like princesses. Doesn't work that way. It is either one or the other. You are either bossy or you are feminine. Never both. You cannot serve two gods, ladies. If you want to act like a man, understand that on a biological level, it rubs people the wrong way. Men don't get criticized for this because they're acting the way they're supposed to. Like men. Oh my God, this is a construct. Negative. Because if this were a construct, women would respond more favorably to bossy women. But because of their biology, but because their biology subconsciously knows what women and men are supposed to act like, they're agitated, they're agitated by women who act like men. This is simple math, guys. A man, let's take it to the other side. A man who exhibits feminine traits in the workplace doesn't get the masculine respect. Now, he might get a lot of friends. He might be very popular in the office. He might go on lunches, on lunch dates with females, right? He might go to conferences and be everybody's bestie, but they don't respect him as a man because he's not acting like a man. If you act like a woman, you won't be treated like a man, which is with respect. If you act like a man and you're a woman, you will be treated like a bitchy, bossy woman. And nobody, man or woman, likes that at work. They just don't like it. Less the behavior, than, what they're right. they're saying their yeah. behavior. Yeah, what is right. style feedback? Yeah, what style is that? feedback is how you behave, not it's how you do the work you do, not the work you do. Mm -hmm. So women are getting feedback that they're too bossy, they're too aggressive, they're too this, they're too that, and men are getting feedback on their work. And that's one of the reasons why men get more promotions. Also, that oh informal time, when the boss takes a trip, takes a junior colleague, that person gets all of that context, all of that time to spend with the boss. Mm -hmm. Who do you think gets promoted? Mm -hmm. And so our message is really simple. If we want to stop sexual harassment in the workplace, one of the things that does that most effectively is having more senior women. <laughs> listen, listen, you guys do this to yourselves. Again, you made your bed. You have to lay in it. You can't say, I want a firmer mattress, get a firmer mattress, and then say, oh, this mattress is too firm, sweetheart. Listen, you wanted to stamp, you wanted to stamp out sexual harassment in the workplace. Mission accomplished. Now you have to deal with the blowback. And because of false sexual harassment claims, men are not going to put themselves at risk. They're not going to put themselves at risk, Ms. Sandberg, just because you shame them into doing that. It doesn't work that way. Anyway, we're going to get more senior women is if women are getting the same numbers of meetings, the same one-on-one -on -one coaching, the same feedback on their work. 
so that they can get the promotions they deserve. So other than men not meeting with male colleagues if they're worried about meeting with, because everybody knows about gossip. We occasionally, there's gossip in our industry. And so, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and, and you, said <laughs> oh, you did that really yeah. well. Yes. And so there's okay. gossip and surely men are not crazy to think, gee, if I, if I uh -oh. have a one-on-one -on -one lunch, uh -oh. this mentoring meeting, the gossip gets out of control. Suddenly I'm having to explain something when nothing was done wrong. What other steps then should men do if they're if they have these concerns about what can happen in a workplace where again they have no control over what people when tongues start wagging well look i'm with gail you have to be able to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation dude listen she skirted the question the guy asked her straight up hey listen and, and by the way when he says when tongues start to wag when rumors start to happen he is talking explicitly about false sexual harassment accusations. This is what he is talking about, and everyone at that table knows that this is what he's talking about. Sheryl Sandberg literally skirted the question. Well, look, I agree with Gail. You just have to have one-on-ones with women. No, he didn't. That's not what he asked. He said, what if women lie about what was said? What if when tongues start wagging, you don't have control over that? Well, you still have to have one-on-one -on -one meetings, right? So despite the risk, still have one-on-one -on -one meetings. It just, no, 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 no. One-on-ones with doors open isn't a one-on-one, -on -one according to these women. That's just all there is to it. And those conversations can happen in rooms with the doors open. In a public restaurant, having a lunch or dinner, I don't really think you can get falsely accused of something. And, and there is the lie. There's the lie. She wants men to watch this and say, hmm, if we meet in a public place, I'm safe. And she knows God damn well, that is not even close to being true. She literally sat there and said, I don't think that men can get falsely accused. And it's interesting, she finally addressed the real issue, which are false accusations. But when she does, it's, well, I don't think men can get falsely accused. And dude, she knows she's full of it. And men ain't going for it. Guys, I'm here to tell you, that's why they're having this conversation. Ain't no way... A man's going to put his job, his benefits, his family, his pension, his 401k at risk just because a woman can get promoted. Not going to happen. The only solution here is for men and women to work separately. Listen, if women can run their own businesses and they can run their own offices, then let them do it. But that's never going to happen. You want to know why? Because they know they can't. And that's why they're bitching. Sheryl Sandberg knows that women need men to get ahead and they hate it. Women need men to get ahead. Women need men to get, to get promoted. Women need men, period. That's always the way it's been, and it's always the way it will be, no matter how much, no matter what women like Sheryl Sandberg says. None of this happens, this utopian dream, none of this happens without men, and she knows it. And this is why she's on national TV begging men to give women opportunities for no other reason but that they were born with two X chromosomes. And any male executive worth his salt laughs at this notion, lights up a cigar, pours himself, pours himself a scotch, and tells his hot secretary to hold all his calls for the next hour so him and the COO, a man, can plan which man is going to get the next promotion.